Welcome back guys, Future Man 19 here uh, on realworldpodcast.com. Uh, this will be the second installment of a infinite amount of lectures that I will be teaching here. Um, don't I, be, I believe that the truth is the only thing that matters, okay? Everyone else, while the media... The talking heads, the pundits, are all speaking about the same thing. You know, the beast is just is just pulling them, stringing them along, right? So everything that the beast is doing in this world, and when I talk about the beast, I'm talking about that biblical entity that comes at the end of Revelation, because we are in the end times. I know, and it's funny because you know. This is a very Christian subject. I mean, it has been spoken about in pretty much every other culture, the end times. Like the, uh, a lot of the Native American tribes, like the Hopi Indians, spoke about this time as well. Um, it's, it's found out throughout the world of this kind of end times theme where basically our civil civilization sort of evolves to a point where there has to be some kind of decision made where some kind of event happens where it kind of, it it sparks a new a new age right and it's not a just a new age belief this has been around for thousands of years okay we just say it's a new age cuz like the universe, the universe works like a clock. So the clock is striking midnight and the new dawn is beginning. The new age, the new, uh, the new millennium, whatever you want to call it. Okay, we all, we all believe it, but we all have different words to describe it. That's why we can't get along. That's why we can't agree with one another because we all have different words. We say, oh, it's a thousand years of peace, of peace. It's the new millennium, according to the Christians. It's the new age, according to the uh, more spiritual uh, new agers, right? Um, it's the, uh, what, the Kali Yuga, right? So, it's all different names, but it's just like, you know, back in the day, they used to look up at the the stars and they could they noticed that because they recorded the stars and all these things they were able to uh, notice that the universe works like a clock okay and then whenever this clock hits certain time periods is when in a major event will happen just like if you look at the pyramids the pyramids are actually a are built like a calendar as well because they are um, geographically aligned to certain uh, constellations, right? Because the constellations are just like a clock. The universe is spinning like a clock, just like a clock on the wall spins, okay? That's how time works. This is inertia. This is gravity. This is everything, right? We're all spinning along. Our planet's spinning our solar system spinning, the universe is spinning, the galaxy is spinning. We're all just spinning around, okay, in this whirlpool of energy. Um, and so, yeah, welcome to the second episode. Uh, again, I don't have any any talking points. I kind of just talk because if I if I sit down and really like draw out a plan of, oh, I'm going to speak about this subject, I'm going to speak about that. It, it's hard for me to, like, I go on tangents a lot, so it's hard for me to, like, focus on that subject to begin with, and I waste a lot of time kind of making up a, a course outline anyways, so, and if I do that, then I won't, I probably won't even make the video. There's so many videos that I, I was going to make, but I ended up not making because I just was spending too much time preparing for it you know what i'm saying so so to do you guys a service i'm just gonna i'm just gonna talk because if i don't then i'm a very busy man so i'll end up not doing it because i'll have something else to do something else will get in the way i'll prepare the way i'll prepare us whatever an outline and then 
I'll end up not doing it, so it's just a waste of time. So hopefully um, we could get somewhere. So I, I'm starting off again where we lo- left off on the first episode. The first episode I titled Introduction to Enlightenment because I believe enlightenment is the epitome of what we can achieve in this life, okay? There's a lot of good goals, you know, a lot of people like to be, want to be rich, or they want to be happy, or they want to this and that, this and that, right? I believe enlightenment encompasses everything. When you're an, an enlightened being, you are happy, you are rich, you're all of the the good features that come with being a human, right? So, as I left off on this, the last episode, we were talking about how enlightenment is a middle path. Just as Christ said, uh, the path is straight and narrow, right? Not to, to mean that we don't falter off of the path sometimes. You know, we all make mistakes. We all... But I, I don't really believe that they actually are mistakes because they're all lessons, okay? And either you learn from the lesson or you don't, right? Like we could have a a lesson right here on the path, right? Where we revere right or revere left, right? And, and eventually though, hopefully we make it back to the middle path, right? But again, that's if you're able to learn whatever lesson that was brought your way, you know. And so, in every in every time we do that, we we should be growing. We should be progressing. Um, like I was saying last episode, there's a lot of people that keep trauma, past trauma, and this trauma continually affects their present and their future i see so i see people all the time i i could see the trauma that's still inside of them and this is why the concept of forgiveness what christ was ultimately teaching his ultimate lesson for everybody was forgiveness forgiveness was like the brand new uh epiphany of the time that he was there like you know if you if you look back in history back in the day they didn't there wasn't really a concept of forgiveness right there's the law of Moses where it was an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth so if someone wronged you you would wrong them back okay there was no concept of forgiveness right and to forget to have your sins forgiven you would sacrifice a lamb or whatever right so when Christ came, he's like, hey, you don't have to be doing those things. You don't have to be, you know, doing eye for an eye anymore. We can we can just forgive each other. And people thought that was so radical and so crazy and so insane that they killed him for it. Right. They're like, what are you talking about? We we, we sacrifice goats and lambs and stuff. What, what do you mean we could just forgive each other and move on? That, that is that is so crazy. We're going to so we're going to we're going to end your life. Right. So forgiveness is the is the is essential to continue on the path of enlightenment. It's not just forgiving others. It's really the most important thing I believe is forgiving yourself. Okay? Cuz when you start to see everyone else as yourself and this is a more um it's a, it's it's further along the path that you start you, when you get further along the path of enlightenment you start to see everything else as yourself okay i call it out it's the, the opposite of introspective introspective is when we're looking within to to find answers or what 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 we're looking for i believe outro i made up the word outrospective um where we're looking at everything else as as a lesson, as ourself, as a way to find ourselves, a way to know thyself, right? I believe Christ, he termed it in a different way. Thoth in the Egyptian times said, know thyself. That was the most important lesson that the uh, Egyptian Thoth, Thoth, right, was able to bring to light was know thyself. Jesus Christ, he was 
also all about that as well and forgiveness is a big part of that because a lot of people we go we go around and we carry this burden right we carry these sins with us these sins are trauma it's sin is just an energetic energy signature that we keep around in our in our bodies and in our aura have you ever been around someone that's like you could just you could tell you could tell right you could tell people that that live on the street or that are drug addicts or that are thieves or that you know that are just bad people they have this like aura about them right that's all their sin that you can feel around them that's all their burdens the sin that they keep around with them right so we want to cleanse ourselves of our sins right we want to get rid of our burdens just like christ said you got to be baptized right you, let me lift the burdens off of you right he wants you to forgive yourself he wants to forgive others remember if if christ is real right if christ is real then that means he's already He's already bled and sa and sacrificed, right, for your sins. So your sins, he's already forgiven, forgiven. So it's now up to you to forgive yourself. Okay, he's already forgiven you already by def by default. You are a forgiven person. Okay, so everything you do, it's already going to be forgiven. Okay. That doesn't mean you go out and do whatever the heck you want, right? Because that's not how we progress. We progress by learning lessons, okay? We can't just say, and we can't do it the other way. We're just, oh, we're we're saved, and so we're just going to do whatever we want. Oh, there's nothing matters, right? We're saved, blah, blah, blah. Um, but I know there's a lot of uh, people hung up on, you know, that, that you know, our that we're sinful people that we're not worthy that we're not you know we're not living up to to what we're supposed to be i believe that one of the most important things that we can do for ourselves is to forgive ourselves so one of the biggest hurdles that i've had to cross in my journey towards enlightenment was to forgive my past okay I am future man because I have completely let go of the past to the point where I even really don't I really don't even remember the past at all okay it's it's I have to dig in deep because I've healed my mind I've healed my spirit I've, I've healed all those those burdens right that hold that will hold you back if you don't revisit and forgive and there there is trauma there there is a lot of it the the real trauma that holds us back it's it's deep inside of you it's it's hidden deep inside of you and you have to really dig that's why a lot of people go to therapy and all these things right because they or trying to figure out what the heck is wrong with me, right? Why am I this way? Why why do I act like this way? Why do I act like my parents? Or why do I carry this burden? Why am I still heartbroken over this, you know, this bad breakup that I had years ago, right? Because it's, it's this, this trauma, right? And the way to forgive, the, an easy way to forgive these things is that you look at all of your past as a lesson okay so if someone cheated you or if you cheated someone or if you know something negative happened you can actually flip it around and turn it into a positive and the way you do that is by treating every negative as a lesson so then you can actually turn that negative into a net positive because now your future self is learning from your past self and so anything that your past self has done negatively can now be switched around and turned into a positive uh a, po a positive outcome because it was just a lesson right um you that's the that's the thing with positivity and I'm, that's why i'm not like 
gung-ho 100% like a lot of these quote-unquote spiritual gurus are because they're all like super positive living in la-la land, right? Like, oh, everything's bright, sunny, sunshiny rainbows when in reality we have all this all this stuff happening all around us, right? That seems pretty negative, right? But what I do, I take all that negativity and turn it into positivity because you can't really turn a positive into more positive, right? It's already a positive. So I'm into the, the, uh, the path of walking in the darkness, which is a very, very, very advanced technique. Okay. I would not this is not where you should begin, but this is where you can become a master along the path, okay? Once you, once you reach a master level of, of all these different... And, and we'll get there, okay? It's, I don't want to jump... I don't want to throw you guys in the deep end just yet, okay? This is the second episode. But I want you, by the end, maybe the fifth 50th episode i want you to guys be i want you to be a magician okay or you are like neo in the matrix and you can actually affect the world around you we see all this crap happening around the world because we don't have positive magicians we have a lot there's a lot of negative magicians out there and it's because they have a monopoly on this knowledge they hold the monopoly over all these things right that's why they use certain symbols you see these symbols all over the pyramids the eyes right the eye of of Ra or whatever you want to call it eye of Horus blah 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 you see it and if you don't see it you need to open up and you need to start becoming more aware of what's going on they use these symbols as a way to control you because you don't know the truth you're not aware of it but you're still under its spell okay a lot of us are hypnotized by their spells because they are they are real life magicians they have real life magicians working magic and that's why this world is bending to their will because there's not like a gandalf out there you know there's there's like okay lord of the rings right analogy Gandalf, right, was, I mean, there was a couple other good wizards, but he was, like, the main one, really, and they had, like, dozens of other evil wizards, right, Sauron and, and, and Sauron and all that stuff, right, they were controlling the, the evil, right, so we want to battle the evil, um, evil with the good white magic, right, against the dark magic so i am if i was just somebody that would that walks in the light that just stays on the positive spectrum all the time and just ignores all the negativity because that's what a lot of people are doing right now they're trying to ignore the negativity but you see if you ignore all this negativity it actually the negativity keeps growing and growing and growing and growing a lot of people okay like my family and friends included right they know i talk about this stuff but they just want to say they just when i try to bring it up they're just like oh my god i don't want to hear it i just want to go about my day right that's what most people are like they want to ignore all these things that are going on right and as you see the more and more and more we ignore it it just keeps growing so ignoring is not a good way to go about it it's not a good defense okay it's not a good offense it's it's a lazy tactic okay so that's why i am out as a just like christ said do not light do not hide your light under a bushel right we want to as magicians as white magicians we want to be out there in the world as a light source right we want to be in the dark because when you're a light source and you're in the dark that's when you really shine the brightest right and that's when you can start turning the dark into light but it's obviously difficult when there's only so few of us okay i've been able to affect some some things in this reality that the the whole world has felt okay 
and I will get into that and I'll show you how to do it okay prayer is a very powerful thing especially if you're a white magician a crystallized being a, a Christ-like figure or prophet whatever you want to whatever you want to label it as okay I like to say magician because it sounds cooler right so um, as far as this path we were talking about um, we were talking about in the last episode how if you want to really understand God and you want to know how his power works and how he creates and how he loves and everything how everything works we have to understand God's language right and I put on the in the bottom here we have math we have CERN science and chemistry right like CERN is there there are why are why are the these kind of creatures of the darkness right these 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 black magicians these dark magicians right why are they uh why did they use math and science and chemistry and all these things right it's because they they know the truth and they have kept it hidden from us for who knows how long at least thousands of years okay and and they and they even have an oath that whoever reveals the knowledge will be put to death okay that's how important this knowledge is and that's how important it is for them to keep it hidden from the public and that's why a lot of people they have this propaganda that instilled in them and it's obviously worked because they believe oh this this kind of stuff is evil to learn this enlightenment thing is evil this you know yoga is evil ma magic is evil blah 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 right like we're, we're just weak vulnerable victims of this world right and only christ can be the the one that saves us right like we will just lay down when you have people in the bible like enoch or elijah and moses that were able to call down fire from the heavens part the red sea even trans you know transfigure themselves right so and become the white magician right so everyone has access to this power everyone can become part of this power because ultimately we are all a part of god right what did what is the first thing you learned in the bible that we were created in god's image okay what does that mean did he draw a picture of us that that looks like him like what does that mean that could be that could be translated in thousands of different ways right god's image what the heck does that mean okay do we all look like god right w what does that mean and then you go further on what was the other thing we learned right the the trees right god planted two trees in the in eden one's tree of of knowledge a lot of people don't put this together let don't think of it this way but it's the knowledge of good and evil okay it's good and evil and when and then the other tree was the tree of it of of immortality or of eternal life or whatever you want to call it right so god was saying though you know if if they eat of this tree of these trees then they will become like us they will become like gods right why because god knows about good and evil god creates the good and evil just as he creates the light and the dark right everything is working together the yin yang right we're all spinning around right positive and negative charge was all created by the same creator right so when we learned of this knowledge of good and evil okay that means we we can know both but evil is 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 a concept if you're afraid of of this evil or whatever then you won't have the the right tool you won't have the power to overcome it 
when you fear things, when you let fear into any choice that you have, uh, fear starts to govern everything, right? Fear takes over. Fear becomes you. I, for one, and I was actually really thinking, thinking about this honestly the other day, that I have never really felt fear before. I wonder what fear feels like or it's been so long that I felt fear that I I don't even know how people do it I don't know how people fear because you could see just I mean you look at the last few years right COVID right people were letting fear govern all their decisions they were afraid of each other they're afraid of their neighbors they're afraid of of uh, of this little microorganism that who knows even what it is or what it did or where it came from or where it went you know i i believe yesterday uh they said the u.s just ended the the uh national emergency right for covid and and it's like <laughs> And it's been it's been gone for months, right? Like no one even cares anymore about it. You barely see anyone wearing masks anymore. But it's like, you know, what kind of what kind of pandemic was this? Can you even call it a pandemic, right? Like they just labeled it as such, but I don't believe it was actually a pandemic. But anyways, but you see how fear took over billions of people's minds and it was a such an irrational state of fear right like it just nothing made sense for these last few years and it was really crazy to see you see where fear can lead you right it can lead the world in a very dark place we saw people being locked up because they weren't wearing masks you know we saw people losing their jobs for not getting vaccinated right we saw all kinds of things going on i was i would walk around without a mask and people would come up to me and and yell at me and like i saw the fear in their eyes they're like you idiot why are you not wearing a mask blah 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 blah, blah. i'm like dude like i'm not afraid i'm not gonna let fear govern my decisions okay i didn't take the vax either because even though i was threatened by everyone around me to take it or blah 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 they are letting fear govern all their decisions right now that fear has dissipated right because the truth is starting to come out that the vaccines really weren't safe and effective that they didn't really alter that much they didn't really offer that much protection to begin with blah 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 right the fear is dissipating because why because the truth the truth is is overcomes the fear it's always the truth really the truth is is basically the opposite of fear because when you know you're only afraid of what you don't know so if you're if you know if you really know and i'm not talking about beliefs okay i'm talking about knowing like you have to know knowledge right knowing okay because beliefs are like opinions they don't mean anything to me And they shouldn't mean anything to you. If you have beliefs, get rid of them right away. Okay? Beliefs are spelled, can't be, a belief, (laughs) belief can't be spelled without a lie, right? B-L-I-E-F, right? Lie. Beliefs cannot be spelled without lies, right? So, get rid of your beliefs. Okay? Especially if you're going to be listening to me, you got to get rid of your beliefs. Get rid of them. I had to get rid of them. I risked my own salvation getting rid of them because I was told that believing or studying these things, researching these things out was evil and it would lead to to hell or whatever. But no, it uh, actually led me to really enjoying my life because... You know, I let go of that fear and I let the truth become my my main ally, right? Like, 
I always say I am loyal only to the truth. A lot of people are loyal to their beliefs, right? And that's how cults are started because they have this belief that they're loyal to and they have to, even in the face of truth and hard, cold hard facts and logic and all in science, whatever you want to say, like even in front of all that stuff, they say they will die for their beliefs, okay? When their beliefs have, have led them nowhere, right? So, only be loyal to the truth. The truth should only matter to you. So, again, a lot of people use the truth. They throw around that word flippantly, right? They just, they'll call anything the truth these days. But what really is the truth? What really is the red pill of all red pills, okay? Again, we got to bring it back. To the very, very, very beginning of the universe, of this earth, of of humanity, of our knowledge of the existence of a creator, right? Bring it back to Genesis, the very beginning, right? What was the point? It's not just a story. There's a point behind this. There's a hidden meaning for those that are able to see, right? So what is that? The truth is hidden there. So, if we want to know how God creates, if we want to know and understand, if we want to talk to God, if we want to communicate with God, we got to know his language, right? So, what did Galileo said, mathematics is the language of God, right? So, why math? You know, why, why math? What is that? What's that even mean? You know, like I said in the last episode, Hebrew is actually every letter corresponds to a number as well. So their language is numbers as well. And that's why gematria works. That's why you're able to interpret reality using gematria only because because words are numbers. Because everything, everything in this universe from the microorganism to the macrocosm of a galaxy, everything is is ordered by math. Everything has a story behind it. And if you break everything apart, the underlying structure is math. That's why I put here, we have to work... Sorry, that's a bad drawing. We have to work on our foundation, right? Like Christ said, if we have a sound, sandy foundation, then we're going to sink, right? So, we will get there. Let me erase this. We got to build from the bottom up, right? That's what you do with a house. You got you can't start with the roof and build the, the basement, you know, after the foundation, right? You got to start with the foundation first. Right, so let's start there and the foundation for everything. Everything is math. Why? Because it's it's logical. Everything is logical. Right? We gotta and I'm not you know, I'm not saying God just used like numbers. It's it's God is is a scientist and a mathematician okay so he didn't just use magic he didn't just use chaos to create everything everything there has an order there's an order to everything i was out walking um in the park uh the other day on easter actually and there was a lake and i was looking at the lake and the casual observer, the unenlightened observer would just see a chaotic, a chaotic sea of water, right? But when I look at it, I see order. I see a higher purpose. I see majesty. I see God. I see, I see the truth. Anywhere I go, I look at a flower. Someone will just see a weed, a dandelion, as a weed, I'll look at it and I see truth. I see the Fibonacci sequence. I see the spiral. I see growth patterns, right? 
I see the majesty of God. I see that every flower, every plant, every tree, what are they all striving for? They're all striving towards life, right? They're all giving glory to God. They're all creating God's image in their own root system and their bark and in the fruit and everything their growth patterns it all gives homage to god everything is in reverence everything is praying to god everything is showing god god everything is showing god you know that they're all worshiping the creator it's all everything is worshiping the creator okay and what are all these plants they're all pointing towards the sun that's why i put the sun at the very top of this drawing here the sun if you look at jesus christ jesus christ was the personification of the universe he was the the macrocosm of the galaxy put into a human form that's why yeah he had 12 disciples that's why there's 12 months on our calendar that's why he was born and died at certain times right why he why a star was used to signify his birth a constellation right that's why God uses signs in the heavens he uses the universe to tell you the truth he uses a tree to give you knowledge okay he gives you a garden right to learn from and to grow from to give you sustenance right everything is praising the creator everything all flowers in time are pointing towards the sun these everything around you is singing praise if you were able i've seen these videos you can look them up they're really cool of people putting these i don't i don't even know what you call it like <laughs> like a microphone up to a a mushroom and they're all singing it's all singing they're all praising just like in the the visions that John the Revelator had in the book of Revelation how he sees angels of God are all singing they're all praising the Creator everything around you is praising the Creator that's why this artificial nonsense what we call the beast right is trying to turn everything natural everything that god has created into something artificial and fake and dark and cold right so nature we got to go back to nature we're starting for to forget we're starting to forget the the trees haven't forgot the grass hasn't forgot if you, there's this picture floating around on the internet that someone put a mag, uh, you know, they magnified a blade of grass and it looks like grass is smiling. It has all these like happy faces, right? Because everything is alive. Everything, every inch of this world is alive, right? Everything that is alive, even if you zoomed in on, on your, you know, on your skin. There's little creatures crawling on you. If you zoomed in on a some air that you captured in the middle of nowhere, there would be little microorganisms everywhere. Every this whole world is alive. Okay? Everything is alive. Everything around you is alive and it's all praising the creator. Okay? Everything is and they're all churn churning towards the sun, right? So the sun, to me, is the the living glory, the living glory of the Creator. It is the it is a perfect 
resemblance of the love and glory of God. The sun, we could learn so much for, from the sun. But what, what are we trying, what is the beast trying to do right now? It's trying to block out the sun, right? That's their goal, to block out the sun. All right? Does that make any sense? No. It's because they don't want you to know the truth. They want to block the truth from you. All right? I even heard that China is creating an artificial sun to replace it. It's just, it's wild out there. The beast has gone wild, and it needs to be tamed. It needs to be put back in its place, okay? And who's going to do that? Who's going to do it? All these people, all these popular YouTube channels or whatever, Q, blah, 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 Trump, blah, 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 blah. No one's going to stand up to it, okay? Why? Because they all make a living off of it. The beast gives them sustenance, right? Gives them a way of living. But the magician, the real white magician, the enlightened one, we live freely. Just as Christ said, do the lilies of the field, field do they toil or spin not? Do the birds, you know, do does not God care for them as he does for you? Why are we afraid? The birds aren't afraid. The trees aren't afraid. The flowers aren't afraid. We're the only creatures that fear. We fear everything. We fear the next meal that we're going to have, right? A lot of people are living down below, down in the very depths of knowledge, the very beginning, the cesspools. And they're stuck there in the mud. Stuck in the mud of terrible knowledge. They are not enlightened. They are dark and heavy, full of burdens, full of sin. Heavy laid with burdens, right? I'm here to help relieve you of your burdens. Christ already did it. Christ already paid the price, okay? I'm only here reminding you of that. That you can make a difference in this world. One person can make a difference. Because what's what's one person... I would say the light, the enlightened ones are represent the one. And that goes back to math. And that goes back to the creator. The creator is the one. This is already mathematically proven. Watch my proof of God video on my YouTube channel, Future Man 19, if you don't know what I mean by that. It's a three hour long video full of information. Hopefully, it will change your life if you're humble enough to receive its message. All we have to do is humble ourselves. Nature is super humble, right? We can learn so much from nature. We can so learn so much from the sun. Sun is just streaming down love. 24 7 just streaming down love imagine the world without a sun would there even be a world no there wouldn't be there wouldn't be life there wouldn't be us there wouldn't be a solar system there wouldn't be a galaxy there wouldn't be a universe there'd be nothing so right, the sun is a very per important concept of enlightenment because I used to look at the sun, I mean, I still do, but when I really started to notice the sun, I mean, I was a little kid at the time, and I would just stare at it for, like, forever, right? They say, yeah, you shouldn't stare at the sun. It's going to blind you, right? But guess what? Everyone in my family wears glasses, except for me, and I was the one that was staring at the sun. Because I was in awe. I admired the sun. I still admire the sun. I still look at the sun. I'm not saying to do it because you have to you have to do it in a certain way. Don't do it in midday. Yeah, you have to figure that out. But recently though, I mean a few years like 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 seven years ago or something, eight years ago, 
I was looking at the sun again, and I was just like, wow, like, the sun, it could provide all the answers that we seek. It has all the answers. You could ask it questions, and it will talk back to you. And all of nature will talk back to you. Everything is intelligent. The more you realize this concept, that everything is intelligent, all of life is intelligent, all of the universe is intelligent, then you ultimately become more intelligent. That's how Christ was able to change the elements. That's how he was able to walk on water. That's how he was able to perform miracles of turning water into wine. Because Christ knew everything was intelligent. And he was the master alchemist. And he used love to tap into that intelligence where just as flowers and trees and everything praises and gives glory to God nature the elements saw Christ as God they revered Christ as much as they revered the creator they gave praise and glory to Christ just as much as they did to the creator because he was the perfect personification of the image of God of the sun, of the soul, right? I always say the sun up there, okay, they like to label it as, oh, it's a giant ball of gas. Really? That's what you believe? That's your simple belief? We always give, you know, we always give, uh, we always hate on the old civilizations for worshiping the sun, but I mean, What's more ridiculous that we that we have evolved so much that we believe that God is some white haired man with a long beard sitting on a throne in the clouds that no one has ever seen? Some imaginary person up there? Or is it more realistic that these ancient civilizations worship the sun because Obviously, without the sun, there wouldn't be life at all. There would be nothing at all. The sun organizes everything. The sun is the most intelligent being, the most intelligent entity in the solar system. We don't like to think of it as intelligent, do we? Why? Because we're stupid. It is the most intelligent. That's why everything praises it. That's why everything gives glory to it. Because it is the perfect personification of the image of God. Why does God say we were created in, the, in God's image as well? Well, if you really broke us down, like I said, you have to break everything down mathematically, scientifically, and, and chemically. What are we made out of? We're made out of stars themselves. We're made out of the sun itself. Everything's made out of the sun, right? We have all the chemical makeup of a sun. Did you know that? We are made in the image of God. Are you starting to put the pieces together? This is what I'm trying to show you guys that you have the literal power of God within you we all do we're all so afraid of using this power we're all so afraid of believing that we're worthy enough to use it that we're just these sinful creatures that keep all these dark parts about us all the time and we don't never forgive ourselves we never forgive others and so that holds us back that holds us back in the past future man is about living up to your true potential your true self that's out there in the future waiting for you waiting anxiously for you to meet them when I uh, was little I tell this story in my YouTube channel um, but I I died briefly 
in a terrible car wreck that I had it with my family and uh, I have memories of the other side just as if you look on any other interview on YouTube or anywhere else people talk about this white space that's on the other side everything's white I call this place that we're in we're we're in the dark space that's why outer space is dark and everything but the other side what we call heaven is a white space that's why we have to be relieved of our sins because darkness has no place in the white space darkness cannot reside in the white space this is why how heaven remains intact because if we let the darkness over there guess what no more heaven right start to turn dark everywhere that's why our sins are important to be forgiven to be washed away to be cleansed because we can't function over there because why because everything is out in the open in the white space you can see everything you can see all the lies that people have told you can see all the sins that people have held on to and they shy away in embarrassment and they want to have the rocks hide them from the face of God because your sin is worn on top of you on top of your soul you can see it all as plain as day because nothing is hidden in the white space so here this is just the game that we play this is the game of can we create our own light here in the dark can we shine brightly here in the dark or do we just let the dark cover ourselves do we let fear take hold of of us that is the the great lesson here that is what every hero sets out to conquer is their fear right and that's what I've been doing all of my life and it's it's not an easy path but it's very fulfilling it's not an easy path especially if you're just starting off because there's trials right just as Christ had to fast in the desert right and he was met with trials and temptations right and there's there's even more to that story which I might go into another time but he was able to to conquer that part of himself right just as we have to conquer that part of ourselves and so the more that we live without fear the more we wait awaken to our true self and how we that you know our true self is not the ego it is not this character that you have built here in this world okay it's not what you have achieved here in this world this world means nothing in it in the eternal realm of time we are but a a blink of an eye right so when you blink do you, do you care about every blink does every blink affect you that's how this life is okay but if we're able to uh, create light here that is what the creator enjoys because he knows the danger that the darkness brings that if darkness was allowed into heaven then there would be no more heaven there would be no more God 
There would be no more Christ. There would be no more sun. There would be no more life. There would be no more love. There would be nothing. And that is exactly what the beast wants. The beast has laid in darkness for eternity to eternity to eternity. But then as our civilization, I wouldn't say progress, progress maybe technologically, but not spiritually, time after time after time, we let the beast out, right? We let the beast out and then all hell breaks loose, right? This is what occurred on September 23rd in 2017, which I don't have time to get into. If you look on my YouTube channel, I have dozens of videos about it, about the subject. Um, but suffice it to say, the beast awaits in darkness. The beast is darkness. The beast wants darkness because it lives in darkness from eternity to eternity. It wishes nothing more for us than to accompany it in the darkness as well. Sad and lonely place that is. I do not wish to reside in the darkness. That's why I fight for the light. I fight for the light. I am a light magician. I do my best to affect this world in a positive way. And so part of that is continuing along this journey of enlightenment because at first it's gonna it will suck you will go through the dark night of the soul I probably went through like seven of them to get to where I, I'm at where I I can't even entertain the the thought of walking or being a part of the darkness anymore I doesn't matter where I am or where I go I bring the light the light is always carried within me anywhere I go and so anywhere I go the darkness runs to its corner so what happens when you turn on a light source in a dark room the darkness immediately flees right because that's how powerful the light is that's how powerful we are as co-creators as co-christs as crystallized beings as white magicians we can get rid of this darkness very easily okay so anyways guys um this is about an hour long trying to keep these about an hour long or around that time um I'm making these ep episodes a dollar because uh I don't I mean I believe if people really want to listen then they'll pay for it if I if if they're not going to listen it doesn't matter if I put five cents or f five dollars like I just think Enlightenment should be something that is is difficult to achieve. It is a difficult thing. That's why all these secret societies and things, they always, always have to be initiated. It's not something that could be handed to you. It cannot, enlightenment cannot be gifted to you. It is only you who can achieve it. Just as only you can forgive your past people other people can't forgive your past for you you have to make that choice you have to make the choice to 
become enlightened. You have to make the choice to be happy. All we have in the end is our choices. And so were your choices for the dark or for the light? Always be mindful of those choices. And we'll talk about more about what the dark and light is in hopefully the next episode. Because I really want to talk about the difference between the light and the dark, which is the positive and negative charge that the universe carries. So, anyways, guys, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you can share this. Um, I'm going to do my best to continue on this journey of enlightenment with you guys and the more people that help support it the more motivation it gives me so if you can share it that would be awesome okay anyways love you guys I'll talk with you guys soon alright bye bye